My name is Kim. I'm a registered nurse at Memorial Medical Center in the Emergency Department, and this video is going to help explain capnography's uses and its waveforms and also how to chart it. Um, capnography measures ventilation, which is the end, end tidal CO2 in millimeters mercury from a patient's exhaled breath. Mm. Normal value is 35 to 45 millimeters of mercury, and that's the same partial pressure of CO2 that you'll read on an ABG, but there it's read as PaCO2. And just for a quick primer, um, oxygenation is how we get oxygen into our tissues. It's inhaled into our lungs where the gas exchange occurs at the capillary alveolar membrane. The O2 is then transported to the tissues by the bloodstream and it is measured by pulse oximetry. Ventilation is how we rid ourselves of CO2, which is a byproduct of the Krebs cycle. CO2 is carried back through the blood, then exhaled by the lungs by the alveoli, and capnography is what measures ventilation. And the most attractive clinical difference between Kelly, you capnography have three, Kelly and, ven three. <laughs> and pulse oximetry is the rate of analysis. Capnography provides accurate information in less than five seconds, whereas a pulse ox will be significantly delayed. Capnography should be considered on any patient receiving sedation or pain medications, for example a PCA, for evidence of hypoventilation or apnea. It's also very useful in assessing the severity of an asthma or exacerbation of COPD. When a person hypoventilates, their CO2 levels will rise, so the end tidal CO2 will be greater than 45. Possible causes of that will be overdose, either accidental or recreational, um, alcohol, sedation, postictal state on a seizing patient, a tiring congestive heart failure patient, head trauma, or stroke. Mm -hmm. Hyperventilation is when the end tidal CO2 is less than 35, your CO2 level is declining. Possible causes of this will be anxiety, bronchospasms, hypotension, pulmonary edema, um, decreased cardiac output, or even overzealous bagging of a patient with an advanced airway in place. Mm -hmm. As for nursing indications, it's important to, as always, pay attention to the trends, not the snapshot number. A steadily rising CO2, which is the beginning of hyperventilation, will help the nurse anticipate the patient's declining respiratory status. Watch for a sudden baseline or flatline change um, of, of greater than zero, especially when moving a patient, because the endotracheal tube can migrate into the esophagus. So capnography will confirm the proper placement. And now I'm going to talk about how to set it up. Our end tidal CO2 boxes are kept in trauma one and trauma two. They look like this under the heading of capnography. They each have pediatric and adult cannulas as well as one that will fit on an endotracheal tube. They come with a calibrator which you can clamp onto any IV pole or the bed frame. There is a small hidden switch right here. You go ahead and you insert the orange end and you screw it into the hole. And then the cable is color coded. The gray end will only fit into the gray end of our Draeger monitor. So this is all reading. There's no need to zero it. It's self calibrating. Now I'm going to ask my handy assistant Amanda to slowly get close to this. Can I get a tag to 25 with a blanket, please? I need a tag to 25 with a blanket. And we'll see if we can get a capnography waveform here. This is me. Here's the SpO2 at 98%. Here's my end tidal CO2 at 38. Assuming that I'm going to start breathing nice and we'll get a great rhythm, then I can explain the patterns of the waveform that you can see here in purple. Let's see if I can lower this. There's a brief plateau, expiration, expiratory plateau, inspiration. 
So this is a perfect waveform. I'm talking, so we're getting a little bit of artifact in here. But you should have a nice boxy picture. As for charting, it's under free text within the um, system. We have used your Edamora. You can know abnormal results. For deep sedation, go into eye view. Under frequent documentations, it's under the min moderate deep sedation. Then scroll down through capnography and just go ahead and assess your risks. So for example, the patient is greater than 65, has morbid obesity, or sleep apnea. Those all need to be noted. And that's it. Thank you very much. And I hope this is helpful.